Potter's Journal. It is late October today, continuing um, our look at um, Michael Cardew. I got another book in the mail. I did a lot of research into it. I don't remember which one I got in the end, so it's a surprise to me to see which one's in here. And continuing our research on Michael Cardew, who bathed outdoors an entire winter. Well, <laughs> my neighbor finally snuck out. Pandemic. Um, finally, a doctor's appointment. I think it's a bit too late, though, for a swim in the pool. November is blowing in. I can feel it in the wind. But I do have a double wetsuit, so maybe, maybe we will. We'll see what happens. And we will let reason and logic maybe prevail on that swim thing. But um, I do tend to get carried away when I start reading something. <laughs> I just want to know more sometime on the Michael Cardew book. So I ordered another one. I have no idea what I ordered though, so uh, we'll be surprised here. I um, did a lot of research. There was one book that I remember having maybe permanently checked out of the library in the 80s when I was going into school, or maybe I owned it and I just can't find it. I don't know where it is. Um, and um, there was uh, also his technical book. Um, okay, this one is um, a Pioneer Pottery. His technical book, Pioneer Pottery. Um, I believe a lot of technical stuff and his experience in Africa and a lot of him personally coming through. It would be a nice compliment read to this. Um, but it looks like I got The Last Sane Man. Michael Cardew. This is by... Tanya Herod, Modern Pots, Colonialism, and the Counterculture. This is a real book. This is a real book about a potter. Um, somebody whose life's work was done between 1920 and um, 1980. And this, I believe, is this, I think this is a new book, too. Um, it, it, I also purchased one that didn't cost a lot, or that I guess wasn't out of print. Um, this is published in 2012. So this is a contemporary book written about a potter, um, a type of person you would think would have been long ago forgotten about. And I just knew after reading his book that there was so much more to be said. So, um... You know, I have some clay to recycle. Um, we will look at a few things that came out of the kiln before the end here. So, let's see what's going to ha happen in the studio today. And um, now, over the next year, when I say Cardew, you'll know where some of my thoughts have been coming from. I recently found 350 fonds of dried up old clay. I usually recycle my clay a little bit at a time, but we are going to do a lot of it. And not with no silly little bats, we are going to do it on the cement here. Okay, I have got an ugly piece of polyester fabric here, the kind of thing you might pull out of a dumpster just to keep the clay clean, something to go between the cement and the um, clay. I don't think it's going to spill out of here, but we will try that. And we do have easy, most of what we get um, can be brought in from a catalog, or ordered online, or from a ceramic shop. It, um, his potteries were set up in places where hopefully there was clay readily available. Seems like um, at one point um, he spent a whole summer building up to having too big a kiln and building one uh, a whole summer up to firing. Um, one kiln, getting the clay, processing it, using it, and I guess not really testing it. 
um, his work um, and assistance and in the end uh, there was something wrong with the clay and everything was ruined not just um, like might happen for us if uh, you took ever took a class and did um, had everything blow up in the raccoon kiln in the end imagine an entire summer's work trying to set up a new pottery with no money no finances um, I think I've said that being a potter is sometimes like throwing yourself into a brick wall that um, um, will say yes in my day they swear I think it's called moshing now in my day they called it slam dancing I will say Michael Cardew was the dance master Okay, and mixing clay, if you buy it powdered, um, when you mix glazes up, they come out completely smooth. So I tried to pulverize this into as small a piece as I could, so that it's nearly liquid. And in theory here, if it's spread thin enough, it should absorb water into the cement below and dry out from the top. Um, we'll say in theory to where it's almost a perfect workable condition that um, many um, potteries in the past and you still see the pictures of them mixing up a slip and pouring it out into a yard in the sun and then uh, using it right from there um, you can save money mixing your own clay a uh, pug mill is really out of the reaches of most studio potters okay so come back to this and see how it works and what else would you do with an ugly piece of um, not just ugly but a piece of polyester fabric it's not the kind of thing you'd want to put up against your skin Okay, and what's in the kiln today? <laughs> you saw some of this made in the last video. Um, I, I, uh, I am convinced his book would make a great movie. That um, all the people that uh, we know from ceramics, from Amada to uh, Suetsu Yanagi and the unknown craftsman are in there. He had so many students and pupils himself that he traveled the states and did um, workshops. I um, Okay, so this is slip combing and I left one to dry out so I could do some scraffito, but I fired it so it's bisque, so um, I will have to put some uh, slip painted brushwork on there. And these we saw last week, the scraffito, this is scratched in after it's dry. So two different effects with the combing and the scraffito. It's also two different clay bodies so we will be looking at these um, sometime at the, in the end as I find a couple clay bodies or if I look for a clay body that I want to take to a higher temperature and uh, vitrify the terracotta. And um, one little passage that I took out of the book between him and Hamada was um, and it was a three time back and forth but something about kiln being over fired and I think Hamada said back, but sometimes over oh, fire could be good. And this was, I think, too long a fire. And in this instance, it turned out good. And the next thing is, do we pick the wild grapes to make jam, or is that just crazy? I've been dealing with apples. There must have been about eight or ten of these. So that's what's kept me busy, and if you ever had organic apples, well, 
sometimes you cut more out than you use. I am not going to be able to get to the wheel today, but um, if you're a beginner potter, you might be happier with something you pick up at a second hand store. And actually, I've found occasionally some insight, great things in there. That um, if you want something more than that, a technical book, but um, Bernard Leach is too much for you, um, a little simpler. C.F. Bins. Anybody ever heard of this one? It's, it's an old, old. Um, classic and um, where did this come from okay <laughs> Betty if you've been missing this since the 80s I'm taking good care of it still I need to get this back to you um, and there's another way to find some good reading maybe I lost my Michael Cardew book that way um, if um, you're looking for something more than that I think his book a pioneer Potter is the one to read because I said in the last video beautifully written, um, reads to like a fairy tale, lots of insight, um, but if you've done that and you do want more, um, I believe this is going to pick up where that left off. Um, he, it's, she um, interviewed the family and every place he, he's been and went into all the archives of ev all his writing that could be found and didn't speculate on things. So. Um, this should be quite a fascinating read, but uh, maybe more than somebody wants to learn pottery. Um, I, you know what? On um, YouTube, I will put a link below. She did an hour-long interview, and it would give you great insight into the book. Or if it's not a book isn't for you, just great insight into uh, Michael Cardew, um, the person and the potter. It's in there. It's in there. The glide, the free-flowing movement. You feel it on a snowboard. You feel it on the glide part of a swim. Sometimes you feel it when you're making a pot and it just goes. This may be the last chance to try doing it with a swim. We could always come back to doing it with the pots. You can't still be watching for an intellectual bit. You didn't get much of that. You can't be watching for pottery. The bloggy bits are at the end, so if you're watching for that, the subscribe button's down there. The bell is up there. Let's see if we keep this up through November. And don't be fooled by the green trees. Look back here. It is October. I checked. It is 57 degrees in here. 